in doing some research for this interview, of course, looked into Peter Thiel. I'm not sure if it's Thiel or Thiel. It's it can, Thiel, actually. My mom, or my, my mom pointed this out the other day in the middle of the live stream I was doing. She sent me a message to oh. correct my pronunciation, which is Thiel. what she does. Thiel. We haven't okay. talked in like months, and she said, it's Thiel, not Thiel. Okay, really, so Peter she was Thiel. Editor. She used to be an editor. Right, so. okay. So this guy, you know, you're putting a lot of emphasis on him specifically. And yes. uh, he's a billionaire. He's, I guess, made much of his fortune in Silicon Valley, uh, PayPal. Um, now with Palantir, which I just want to say the name Palantir is from Lord of the Rings. Like he has this like Lord of the Rings thing, right? Like I, I just wanted to comment it because it's just funny because the Palantir is like the, the crystal ball that like wizards and like, yeah, I guess the wizards and Lord of the Rings used to like observe, like they can like communicate and see, you know, what's going on all over the world with these different like orbs. So it just, it's interesting. It's, it's like it's like he's aware that he's the villain in some well, kind of. <laughs> so so so, Thiel has written an essay. Thiel has written an essay. I'm just I'm still getting used to pronouncing his name correctly. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have time too. to learn my enemies' pro- proper names. <laughs> um, okay. This yeah. person, uh, Thiel, he he sees himself in this way, and it's, uh, yeah, he espouses something called the Dark Enlightenment. He did not coin that term. It was coined by somebody else, but he's written an essay on it. Uh, and uh, it is, and there's been some public exposure of that in, in, in the press the last couple of years. Although the term, the term of art used by uh, Barry Weiss of the New York Times during this short period when they put in this fastest Barry Weiss, Barry Weiss, who's a, who's a, a Teal operative uh, in there. Uh, she wrote a, did a whole article on the, the, the intellectual dark web about these intellectuals who are talking about subjects that are, you know, they're, but they have to be quiet about it because, you know, the, the, you know, they could be, they're being oppressed by the public and they're mm-hmm. all people, you know, teal people. Uh, and Joe wrote, you know, uh, and, and they, and, and the thing about this dark enlightenment philosophy, which, which people should read about, um, that, that term needs to be more, needs to be better understood, mm-hmm. uh, is that it had, it's not just a, 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 a philosophy uh, that is dangerous. Uh, it's not just a philosophy that if put into practice, you know, someday, would be would end uh, our civilization as we understand it, like in terms of what we the things we have established since the Enlightenment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just that; it is something that is immensely attractive and has an immense potential, especially right now, among the the kind of intelligent, among the kind of uh, perceptive, mm-hmm. among the white technician class at the NSA, uh, the the people who follow Tim Pool, Joe Rogan, the people who who realize. The Democratic Party is corrupt, uh, and don't really know anything else besides that, you know. Or who mm-hmm. the people who realize that uh, that democracy sometimes leads to next, you know, silly outcomes, but sure. uh, but have not thought through what the alternatives could be that don't involve the dark, you know, this and and what this is the dark enlightenment. It's a technocratic, like neo neo feudalistic, uh, obscurantist. Uh, fastest, you know, uh, ethos. Uh, yeah, and and it's it's best summed up by by Thiel himself when he says that you know I don't think democracy and freedom are, are compatible anymore. And the thing about what he says there is that he's partly right, and that's one of the problems is that uh, democracy, particularly as the U.S. are an example of this, there's nothing about democracy that prevents the population from turning from becoming monsters and getting a monstrous things. Mm-hmm. The U.S. has been a great example of that. For the last for, for a long time, you know, mm-hmm. to, to different extents. I mean, we, you and I in our lifetimes, uh, our country uh, has committed a, a quiet, a little discussed genocide in the Arab world, with, yeah. with less discussion than than uh, any number the hundreds of subjects we could name that have been discussed in the press, without asking mm-hmm. why. So, so he's correct about that. Uh, and there, but there's two there's two there's two interpretations one can make of that of the fact that democracy. One is to try to build something. That uh, that retains the open society and retains openness and transparency, uh, and minimize and, and seeks to minimize, identify, and defeat threats to that transparency. Uh, and the other is 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 to take thing to take over everything using uh, the intelligence community, uh, the information age, sort of uh, 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 world around us that has been built, to use that all in conjunction. With very sophisticated methodologies, prop disinformation, prop uh, technologies, uh, old intelligence, psychological warfare doctrines, 
and to build a clandestine uh, ruling class, a kleptocracy, uh, among people like you know uh, Pierre Omidyar and, and Peter Thiel, uh, and and uh, those those who support them, and those who don't those who don't, don't even know they're supporting them, don't even know they're working for them. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what they're trying to build, and I understand why they're trying to build it, and I I I, I know I, I can understand their motivations. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, I can understand a lot of motivations, uh, and and uh, this one is is dangerous. It it, it is it is as dangerous uh, as Nazism, uh, and in some ways more so because Nazism was loud, and it was not yet discredited. It was it, the word Nazi didn't mean anything in 1930. You know, mm-hmm. didn't have these connotations mm-hmm. in 1930. Mm-hmm. Uh, by 1940, it did. Um, this is something that, you know, and, 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 that in World War II, of course, uh, the U S, you know, the U S was not in conjunction with several other countries, essentially operating under the German madman who hates democracy. Whereas now it is, uh, the German madman uh, who was able, was able to put Trump into office. I mean, that was a very, that was a very closely won election, you know, uh, and the Cambridge Analytica Facebook Palantir, uh, operations to put out this information in, in ways that are very sophisticated and, and were already tested uh, in the Middle East by the U.S. Uh, uh, Pentagon via a program called Romas Coin that I wrote about uh, and uncovered in, in 2011, 2012. Some of the same people being involved. Uh, there's there's no denying that 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 is that uh, is what put Trump into office. That and the and the big network that Thiel had also built, people like Tim Pool and the and the alt rights. Uh, which we now know more and more about uh, about how that happened and how it was directed and how it leads back to Teal. So that's why my emphasis on Teal. It, it, it was it, I, I was I was quite animated back in ten, about him ten years ago. I was saying this man should be hanged. Uh, I, I had seen enough back in 2011, uh, and I'd seen enough of how how the response was insufficient and how the press and, and uh, political parties could be co opted. Uh, by now, I've seen more than I've just seen. I've seen enough to know that. Uh, I'd rather be fighting in World War II than this, because in World War II, uh, things are a little bit more straightforward, you know. Uh, and, 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 you know, James Carville would not be working for Hitler, but James Carville is right. working for Peter Thiel, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other ways to put it. But I mean, and, 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 and you know, in terms of analogies to Hitler, I should, I should just, I, has, I should, has, I should, uh, rush to say that, you know, I, I don't make this, this comparison at all very often. I I, I think there's plenty of people we can, we can compare people to Stalin, whatever. There's tons. We're all we're all we all we're all comparable to Hitler. All of us. We're all human beings. Um. But Peter Thiel has the the ability, and has proved and has shown his ability, ability and has already begun engaging in putting into place this apparatus, and the apparatus defends itself very well. Defends itself from being seen for what it is. Mm-hmm. And it co-ops threats to itself, and it and it, it is it is sophisticated enough that I accidentally worked for it for mm-hmm. several years without realizing it while I was in prison mm-hmm. because I wrote for the Intercept. You know, I was asked by Glenn Robo to write for the Intercept, uh, which Pierre Omidyar had funded, and unbeknownst to me, Pierre Omidyar uh, was working with Peter Thiel on creating the Intercept and with the intelligence community, uh, mm-hmm. and and we're already using Weave, the neo-Nazi that we'll talk about, sure a bit. Uh, to intimidate uh, people like uh, my fellow activists that I had gotten lawyers for, paid the PayPal 14, into refraining from criticizing Pierre Omidyar during that period, lest people look too closely into how odd it was that Omidyar, a person who had called for the arrest and prosecution of whistleblowers just a few years prior, and who had intelligence, some intelligence community connections already known, uh, that he was funding this whole thing, this $500 million intercept project that I was conned into writing for. So I was used as bait. I was used to cover up, to give street cred, you know, as a as someone who was a confirmed, you know, anti-authoritarian. Uh, I was used as bait to help uh, encourage other whistleblowers to submit to the Intercept. And had I known uh, who the first editor of the Intercept was, John Cook, who is who is one of the ones that is most heavily linked to the FBI, had I known that Sam Biddle uh, was working there, the guy, the only journalist who celebrated my my prison sentence and who also worked with the FBI in documents that we've put out since then. And had I known that uh, a person who would later go on to become the spokesperson for the NYPD was working working for the Intercept. And had I known mm-hmm. that all that uh, two of those people, 
were, were, were given the reality winner documents before she was identified. Uh, as we now know, uh, I would have told Glenn Greenwald, you know, just wait there. Uh, when I get out, I'll come, I'll come find you and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll you and your little dogs and I'll, I'll eat them in front of you. Um, piece of shit. I mean, I mean, I would, you have to understand, I mean, I was in prison because, because of, of Palantir. A lot of people were dead because of Palantir. Um, Palantir mm-hmm. would later, you know, it would go on to help with the ice raids. I mean, it was integral to the, to the massive ice, the roundups, the, the, the data right. finding the families and so they put children in, in our gulags. So when I compare Peter, Peter Thiel to Hitler, uh, I'm, I'm not saying they're exactly alike. Uh, Peter Thiel in some ways is much more sophisticated and better positioned than Hitler. And, uh, and, uh, and Hitler would never, Hitler would have had, even the German Nazi, the apparatus, the Gestapo, would have had much more difficulty getting its, its greatest enemies, uh, mm-hmm. to actually work for them for so long as I did. It, it sounds, okay, so you're talking about a, a, a billionaire, neo feudalist, dark enlightenment guy who, so you're talking about the intercept specifically and and it's 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 fascinating and it's obviously very disturbing what you're explaining here because the intercept has pre- presented itself as being a place of journalistic integrity and yeah. it's there to help whistleblowers like you know with uh you know Snowden leaks or or with Reality Winner and these other examples of like this is a place where whistleblowers can come. So it seems to me like if Thiel or sorry, Teal is using this media uh, network or this um, this outlet to promote that image or that idea that it's a safe place for whistleblowers and real journalism to still occur. Then it's like a form of capture. It's exactly, like a way of exactly what it is, and that's exactly what 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 my big that that this is the concern that extends everywhere. This this is what we're talking about really is capture it is, is a secret capture, not just open state capture, uh, but mm-hmm. capture of uh, and that capture goes goes beyond the intercept uh, to degrees that we're that we've just started learning about in, in the last few months, uh, mm-hmm. and it went into my own organizations that started when I got out of prison, and mm-hmm. we had to which is why I had to shut down. My, my groups and my nonprofit uh, a little while ago because uh, the degree of it was uh, was astounding. It was shocking. Uh, and again, luckily, um, you know, luckily, uh, well, regarding the intercepts, uh, there's, there's a number of people who work there as well, who work in the actual offices, like uh, who are very different people, very different views, like Marcy Wheeler, uh, who has spoken, now spoken out about her experience there. Uh, under John Cook, mm-hmm. former editor of Gawker, weird person to put in. Uh, and uh, Ken, uh, a good friend of mine, the guy used to write for Harper's and so forth. Uh, mm-hmm. I remember his name in a second. He, you know, he wrote with the Intercept and, and took him, didn't take him long to figure out something was wrong. And uh, Tim Shorrock, who, who I like and who is uh, the person who really looked and dug in the intelligence, the private intelligence community uh, and Booz Allen Hamilton even before we did and before Snowden came out, you know, uh, he's since found a lot more about Pierre Maguire's internet, uh, intelligence connections. And so gradually the consensus among a lot of us, th- those of us who, uh, are not willing to be bought, uh, we have to be tricked into, be- into being bought, you know, uh, have, yeah. w- the consensus is that yes, it, it was called the intercept for a reason. Oh, yeah. Not ironic. Um, so I, I just want to ask this before I think we can get into some more of the details you mentioned this, uh, individual weave and and connection to teal and all of this but so obviously you credit rightfully teal as being largely responsible for tipping the 2016 presidential election in trump's favor trump was his uh preferred candidate compared to yes. hillary clinton and i suppose that and was and the and effort point out, just another point out there it's, it, this is not very known because i've been reported but in the podesta emails one can find that uh, Palantir's assistance was sought by both parties. Uh, Podesta, you know, and them had internal mm-hmm. conversations about approaching uh, Alexander Karp, president of, of, of Palantir, who himself is not not the same philosophy as as, as Teal, but neither were a lot of people who were from approaching them about them helping the Democrats. And of course, they had they been more familiar with the subject, they would have known that that was not going to happen. That Teal had made his decision. Uh, but yeah, but both parties sought Palantir's help. That's that's that 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 should give people a nice little dip into. How important Palantir is. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. Go ahead. 
I was just going to just ask, you know, this is sort of a, a broad thing, but, you know, what is, when we're talking about the dark enlightenment, we're talking about this sort of anti-democratic, anti-open society view, but I'm, I'm curious what, is there any way, has, has Teal ever like articulated what his end goal is? Is there any sort of like idea of what a future where he's not exposed and put in his place uh, would look like like do you what do you i guess fear will happen with someone like teal and his collaborators getting away with it i guess what i fear most is that he has indeed said some things about you know what the future should look like and that it should not involve democracy and uh that he has been caught you know a number of times uh putting that into practice uh but not just mm-hmm. the, the election in 2016, but the things that we, we exposed in 2011 about targeting j- dissident journalists, targeting labor union leaders, uh, investigating their children, using the children as leverage, uh, things that mm-hmm. things that came out and that disappeared after a while. And, and all the people involved went on to continue to work for Palancer and in some cases to get involved in some other election. There's other election uh, interference operations that went on uh, in the last five years in other countries that... Uh, I'm not in a position to talk about, but someone else is, and it's, it's, you know, and there's, I I would, but there's no point, you know, it doesn't, you know, even this one hasn't. So with the, uh, with the goal, if I just feel like the goal. So, so so, yeah, so his goal, I mean, what, what the world would look like, I mean, it would look, it would, if you think about what the world looks like today compared to 10 years ago or 12 years ago, um, think about that for a second, Mm -hmm. uh, think about more of that. Think about ourselves from that, uh, except, you know, uh, except on a, you know, not on a linear curve, but on a, you know, a, whatever escalating curve. Um, yeah. So what I'm saying is the ice raids, for instance, you know, mm-hmm. uh, imagine that on a larger scale. I mean, imagine, uh, I mean, you know, as we, as we've seen, that was, that was a larger scale. But imagine that being done more forcefully, more openly, uh, and, and the American, perhaps the, the half of the American public's true, true nature, true, true spiritual ethos being put into real practice, which is to say, you know, fascism. Uh, yeah. Imagine the, the, the impulses, uh, both the technocratic impulses of those who will lead uh, and those who, who do lead, including uh, you know, uh, Teal's good friend, uh, Max Zuckerberg, uh, uh, you know, and Trump and, uh, and other you know, authoritarians uh, in Europe. That have had conferences uh, with him, uh, with the fellow in uh, Hungary, Hungary, I believe. Uh, oh, or bonds. Anyway, okay. just imag- imagine a world that is where democracy, op- an open society, uh, and, and and the ability to engage in dissent. Imagine a world in which people who are climate change activists or who want to expose corporations a little bit, they have no chance. Imagine in which they're not just being arrested here and there, but they're but people aren't hearing their message. And they're being told they're being you, powerful algorithms are being used along with persona management, social media bots coordinated by AI uh, are being used to make sure that um, that there is no resistance um, at all. Yeah, that is that is what I am afraid of. I've been afraid of it since 2011. Uh, I did not know as much, obviously, you know, the forms it would take. Uh, and I was born. Again, I really thought in 2011 that us exposing things going to prison for him and then those things getting mentioned again in the press to, oh thanks to my prison my trial uh i thought that would be enough to keep palanter to, to, to remind reporters when they talk about palanter that palanter has done this this and this and i was naive to think that uh because Pal- palanter's thing they've been caught doing and the articles about deal almost never mention any of this um mm-hmm. an article you read an article in the new york times you know uh you read five articles in the new york times about palanter and they'll contradict each other about what they've done, the, the early ones where they go, they they're, they're mostly accurate about the uh, field, the Palantir stuff, Team Themis and their the scandals they were caught in. They could be one in 2013 by a guy who who uh, interviewed everybody at Palantir and and wrote a demonstrably false version of events that losses over certain things and and then uh, and then you can trace him and, and see that he went on to work for uh, Google after that in a much better paid position. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and that's that's just the examples of the ones who are actually on the take. You know, it's just uh, I, I'm I'm concerned that Palantir has arrived at a time when we have a very as individuals, as activists, as as, as the media, as a public, uh, as a citizenry, have no not insufficient institutional memory. And, and there's so much, and of course, there's so much to remember, so much going on, that it's that much that much harder 
to bring focus on on threats, especially threats that are able to defend themselves, you know, the, the immune system from from exposure. Uh, mm-hmm. And so much easier for bad actors to engage in bad action, and and so much so much normalization of bad action in the last five six years, especially. I mean, again, Trump was uh, Trump was not, of course, like did not have the worst effect of any U.S. president modern age. I mean, he, but but he, you know, obviously he, he didn't preside over some of the things you know that killed more people, for instance. Uh, but what he did do was to uh, to make it more normal for. The, 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 the goofy, you know, mainstream uh, uh, establishment consensus decency uh, for even that to be taken down. And that's that's good and bad. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's also powerful for them because because people who oppose the establishment, you know, but don't know what to make of that, don't know what that means and what, you know, they were easily. Uh, they were ready. They were ready to 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 follow. Uh, someone who opposed, claimed to oppose the establishment, and the fact that a, p- a person who works with the CIA and Facebook, DC, and 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 uh, all these organizations in the UN is, is running this anti-establishment network. People like Tim Pool and Joe mm-hmm. Rogan and so forth, and and uh, and even employed you know independent uh, reporters like uh, uh, Yasha Levine and so forth uh, to go after uh, his opponents. Uh, mm-hmm. that is, that is indicative of our age. It's indicative of where we're going. So that's what I'm afraid of. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not afraid of nuclear war. I'm afraid of, of the, the point at which, uh, at which, um, there, there can be no war because the war has already been won in secret. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. been won, you know, uh, by, uh, the wrong people. Uh, I'm afraid of this information. Uh, 